Hidden History is brought to you by G2A.com and our supporters at Patreon. One of the most infamous organizations in all of Tamriel, the Thieves Guild has been a major player in the lore of the Elder Scrolls series for a very long time providing some of the funnest and most interesting quests in the whole franchise. The reason Bethesda created this guild is pretty self-evident. After all, the idea of a thieves guild can be found in countless role-playing games, including Dungeons and Dragons. But where did this idea come from, and does it have any basis in reality? The answer to those questions may be a bit more interesting than you might have thought. That's because it turns out there was at least one real Thieves Guild found in medieval history. The Banu Sazan, one of the most powerful groups in the Islamic criminal underworld during what is commonly referred to as the Islamic Golden Age, which began in the 8th and ended in the 13th century. Since most historical documents from that era weren't written by criminals, it is hard to get a lot of concrete information about the group. According to an article from the Smithsonian Magazine, the possible story behind their founding is just as epic as an Elder Scrolls story. The legend goes that a Persian prince by the name of Sheikh Sazan was cast out and denied his rightful place on the throne. As a result, the prince wandered the empire, apparently in search of a new purpose in life, and eventually founded the guild. This is one of a few tales about how the group formed and is probably exaggerated or even outright false, but it goes to show how legendary the group was. Getting back to the Elder Scrolls, the Bene Sazan seem to have very similar goals to Tamriel's Thieves Guild. They robbed and swindled, sure, but also they exerted as much influence over their area as they could. One famous Islamic poet who spent time with the group, Abu Dalaf al Karai, This guy. Anyway, he called their leaders beggar lords, admiring their great wealth. And of course, the group wouldn't be a thieves guild without some home burglary, which was the guild's real bread and butter. Their methods were a little more creative than those of Tamriel's thieves guild though. For one thing, they were said to bring a tortoise with them during their home invasions. The idea was that the guys would bash a hole into the base of the homeowner's house, stick a lit candle on the tortoise and let him crawl into the small hole so they could get a look inside and see if there's anything worth stealing. So Bethesda, remember. Whenever Elder Scrolls 6 happens, we need fully playable tortoises strapped to candles. Get on it! Another interesting aspect of the Banu Sazan that mirrors the game's Thieves Guild is how relatively inclusive they were. If you were a man who could make money, you were in. The group not only included violent criminals, but poets and artists as well, usually to work as con men. One of those poets was a man named al Ukbarai, who admitted that he couldn't make a living with his art, so he joined the Banu Sazan and ran scams. He wrote one of the few surviving documents about the group written by a member, a long poem that begins with the lines, Nevertheless I am, God be praised, a member of a noble house. Through my brethren, the Banu Sazan, the influential and bold ones. The Banu Sazan is an example of a real-life thieves guild, but that still doesn't quite explain how the concept first caught on in popular culture. The first published fiction about a thieves guild is believed to be the novella Riconet e Cortadillo by Miguel de Cervantes, which was released in 1613. In this story, a young thief must work his way up from an apprentice to a master thief, while becoming a member of the powerful guild. Jumping way into the future, the first appearance of the Thieves Guild in a modern fantasy story appears to be the 1943 sword and sorcery adventure Forth and the Grey Mouser by Fritz Leiber. Though this book may seem forgotten today, it actually had a pretty big impact on the fantasy genre, being referenced in everything from Final Fantasy to, you guessed it, Dungeons and Dragons. Which of course leads us back to how the concept of the Thieves Guild probably ended up in the Elder Scrolls in the first place. Now it's time for our comment showcase. This week we have a great one from King Nazaru, who submits his theory that Clavica's Vile might be based on Mephistopheles, a demon featured in German art and folklore. The most popular version of the character comes from The Legend of Foss, 
Where Mephistopheles, much like Clavicus Vile, grants wishes that don't quite turn out the way that the mortal humans making the wish thinks they will. Both characters love toying with mortals, as Mephistopheles is depicted as enjoying their pain and suffering, just like Clavicus does. Now we have our shoddy showcase. This week's comes from the Grey Wolf Potter, who asks us to put him on the bad comment showcase so that he can win a bet against his friend and punch him in the arm. Consider the bet one, Grey Wolf. Make that punch count. Actually, um, you didn't hear that from me. Violence is bad! Lastly, we have our trivia. Last week we asked you what new faction was introduced in the Fallout 4 Automatron DLC. And almost all of you got it right. It was D, the Rust Devils. That was too easy for you guys. So this week we're going a bit harder on you. As most of you probably know, the Thieves Guild in Skyrim is known as the Rataway. If you go to the very end of this underground tunnel, you'll find a pickpocket skill book called what? Is it A, Thief, B, Vampire, C, Beggar, or D, Wolfmere's Guide to Better Thieving? See, I told you it would be harder. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button, but if you really enjoyed it and you want to support us, you can head over to g2a.com to get some awesome cheap games. I mean, the other day I got the whole Oblivion Game of the Year edition for like £4. It's a pretty solid deal, so you might be able to get the Fallout 4 Season Pass on quite a good deal as well, so definitely check out the link in the description, because it not only helps them grow as a business, but it helps us keep our lights on at Shoddycast. And uh, I'll see you guys next week. Peace off.